Hi, welcome to the Exploring, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with our special guest, Nick Vale. Nick Vale, great to see you again. Okay, the, the famous Nick Vale, who is the producer of our Manhattan cable, cable TV series, No Free Will with a question mark, a live call-in show. Free Will question mark. Oh, sorry, Free Will question mark. But we explain on that show how, and we invite callers, and we... we basically debated all its excellent show. We're, we're pioneering, uh, basically leading humanity to this brand new consciousness, a reality-based consciousness and why we do things. All right, so like the title of the, today's show is like, why universal will and not free will governs behavior. All right, in other words, like the world is completely deluded. Our world believes, yeah, sure, we have a free will. Anything we do is up to us. Where we're trying to explain to the world, it's not our will as human beings that determines what we do. It's universal will. Nick, explain it to them. Well, let's first define what we mean by free will like we always do. Free will means that your life is up to you. You could have done otherwise. And you were the first causer in all your affairs. All right, keep going. Keep, keep That's my definition. All right, actually, all right. So, so basically... I um, could go into the pleasure principle from the unconscious, but that's my definition. All defi right, another, another definition is, because I wanted to take a drink. Um, free, another definition is that um, if we had a free will, we would, have, we would have more control than does a puppet or a mannequin or a robot, Okay. Now, like, we're saying that we have absolutely no... So this isn't about political freedom. This isn't about, like, freedom of speech or anything. This is about, like, what explains what we, why we do what we do. So, all right, so now, now you kind of un you understand why, you know, what this concept of free will is. Again, if we had free will, we would have more control over what we do than a puppet and robot, which has no control. And we're saying we don't have any more control than a puppet or robot. We have absolutely no we control. We just have consciousness. Right. That's the only difference. And, and, uh, we're aware of what we do, but we can't control it. Excellent point. Thank All you. All right. So now, Why is so important? Now, so let's just, so now this is just basically before we get into this, uh, well, actually, our whole theme today, today is going to be on why free will is impossible. But like, no, no, but we have a tradition. Every show we start, what's the, what, why is the show so important? Exactly. The, the commercial part. Absolutely. So, all right. So why, why is this show more important? And take some time on this to answer this. No, you go first. Uh, all right. Oh, you want some more water? <laughs> yes. No, why right. is the show important? This is the most, I don't want to be, you know, I can't, I can't take credit for it, which is why I didn't want to use my name most of the time, but since George is forcing me the universe uh, why is the show important this is the most important show in the history of time because we're leading the world and actually new yorkers and white plains and manhattan first to a whole new consciousness of honesty is the best policy why we came to earth and became humans is to get this right to alleviate uh depression and insanity by getting the right consciousness of what reality is that human beings do not have Free will. That's why it's important. It's, it's not only important, it's the most important thing ever. More important than any other topic in the history of time. Thank you, Nick. And listen, audience, you don't have to take our word for it. You don't have to take Nick's and my word for it. You can take the word of like this eminent American philosopher. The guy's name is John Searle. If you look in the, I think, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy for philosophers that were born after 1900... He's ranked number 13th. He's actually tied with some other guy. This was, I think, a, a survey they did in 2009, I think. Anyway, um, a few years ago. So basically, he was ranked number 13th in terms of how many times he's been cited by other philosophers. So he's not just an ordinary. So anyways, like, so what's his take? He was like being interviewed for this book by this British psychologist, Susan Blackmore. And they're talking about free will, right? And he says... He says, for free will to be acknowledged by our world as an illusion would, and I'm quoting directly, be a greater, a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein or Copernicus or Galileo or Newton or Darwin. 
Okay, then he goes on to say, it would alter our whole conception of our relation with the universe. That's how big it is. Nick and I, you know, and, and, and Mike Laster and Chandler Klebs and Trick Slattery and a few of us are leading the world to a fundamentally, categorically new consciousness. And like, we're like, you know, like the academics, academics, I mean, Harvard, MIT, Princeton, Yale, they don't even get this. This is how big it is. This is how cutting edge, you know, because in other words, like if they got it and if they got the importance, like we get it, we, they'd be doing these shows. They'd be promoting it. But, but again, Nick and I and Chandler, I, mean, I, I like to self-promote us. Like, Sam you know, Harris. Sam Harris, yeah. And Sam Harris, a neuroscientist, came up out with this book, Free Will, in 2012. He's basically following our lead because we were like promoting it before him, right? Because we got to promote, you know, because like, because yeah. basically the idea, the reason reason we're promoting ourselves in a sense is because like we want to get a movie made about this in other words like this show is great but if a documentary came out explaining to the world why we don't have free will i'm telling you you think Inconven inconvenient truth made 50 million dollars at the box office right hugely popular this this movie would probably make twice as much you know it get people to really understand all right so like again we're leading why is this important because the world is completely deluded about who we are as human beings and why we do what we do the belief in free will is a very harmful, toxic belief. It causes severe depression, severe anxiety, severe resentment, severe jealousy, severe guilt, there's, uh, hatred, retribution, revenge. It's a terribly divisive, horrible d belief that you could have done otherwise. You're going to want to see yourself get punished and blame yourself if you do something wrong. And you're going to feel like a failure if you fail at something, because after all, you could have not failed if you, if you believe in the nonsense of free will. So it's a terrible belief, and it needs, it's causing a homicide and suicide. That's what, that's what I think. That's and right. you've got the global climate change thing, but let's leave that aside for now. So what's the topic now? All right, the topic is why universal will and not free will governs behavior. So universal will is causality. Yeah, the will of the universe. And also, the pleasure principle is universal will. You cannot escape the pleasure principle. Okay. All right, but with universal will, all right, all right. here's the thing. Basically, what I'm saying, what is universal will? Okay. Basically, free will is like that we as human beings are deciding what get done, gets done, right? Last show, we just went into this whole elaborate explanation of how everything is governed by cause and effect right so like let's say we make a decision if we believe we have a free will we're going to say like yeah we made that decision and nothing caused us to make it you know it's our decision nothing but that's nonsense because nothing can be uncaused and if, if you posit that some things are uncaused you couldn't even you couldn't attribute that to a free will anyhow because that makes no sense but anyway so like Basically, we make a decision, there's a cause for that decision, right? Everything has a cause, there's going to be a cause for that decision. Causes always go back in the past. You can never have a cause coming after what it causes. It's always coming in the past. So then you have like a cause to our decision, a cause to that cause, 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 and these causes continue going back cause by cause, moment by moment. They span back before you were born born. They span back before the planet was created. They span back before the sun and the galaxy was created. They span back all the way to the Big Bang. So what is this universal will thing? Basically, this, this Big Bang event, and we're talking just about the known universe because who knows what came before the Big Bang. But as far as we know, it was the Big Bang's will, this event, this universe as the Big Bang that initiated this causal progression that ultimately leads to everything we do. And that's why, you know, we don't have a free will. We are, our human behavior is governed by universal will. So you're saying the universal will is causality. Absolutely. So the universal will is also, the, you could say, God's will, because if you equate God with the universe, then it's also... God's will. Everything is God's will. Explain that in more which detail. Is, which Excellent is cause point. and effect. Excellent point. Explain that, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm what you, what, a pantheist as well. Everything is God's will, which I equate God with the universe. All the laws of the universe are the will of the universe, which is actually the pleasure principle, meaning we as human beings have no choice but to predict what will give us the most pleasure and the least amount of pain. I just want to say one thing about your cause, cause, cause. There's cause and effect and the effect is the cause of the next. So the word effect has a synonym of, uh, there's a cause and then an effect, and that effect is also a cause. Excellent. So every effect is a cause and effect. So, Absolutely. All right. Good point. 
Uh, thank you. All right, but uh, no, no, the, another great point about... Well, you just said cause, cause, that's cause and effect. The effect is the new cause. You're right. right. Yeah. All right. Or uh, reason. In psychology, it's reasons. Uh, all right. So, and you're right. You're, it's great that you brought in God because basically this, t this show could have easily been, been um, titled, you know, free will is, you know, we don't have a free will. Our human behavior is governed by God's will. And so, like, why do I say this? You probably believe in God. If you're like 80, 90 percent of Americans, you believe in God or higher power, right? Now, what's your belief in God? You believe that God is omnipotent, right? Omnipotent. What's omnipotent mean? All powerful. All powerful. You believe God is sovereign. What does sovereignty mean? All knowing. Well, sovereignty means it's all, all powerful also. Sovereign, oh. you know, his power. Omniscience is all knowing. Right, right. So like, all right. So like basically, so God is all powerful omnipotent. That means that what God says goes, right? In other words, like, it, it, you can't have an omnipotent God, you know, and free will. And some people say, well, God has, is all-powerful. He can do anything. No. Even God, for example, you know, all-powerful doesn't mean he can do anything. <laughs> all-powerful just means that whatever gets done is up to him. In other words, God can't make one equal three, okay? God can't do the logically impossible you know, in other words, like God can't make, probably God can't probably make himself cease to exist. All powerful is a little confusing because somebody watching TV could say, well, God is all powerful. See, God gave man free will. No, I know, but that's But if he's I'm omniscient saying. and knows everything, if he knows what you're going to do before you do it, then obviously you can't change your mind and do something else. So omniscience is really the one that refutes free will the best. All right, so let's see. And omnibenevolent, that. where he's all good, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That doesn't no. mean there's free will or not. Actually, that's, 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 that's nonsense, a too. So. How could it be all good when there's so much suffering in the world? I know. We'll just, so we'll omniscience that. is the one that really refutes free will. We'll have to address that, yeah. Um, all right, so yeah. So with omniscience, again, omniscience means that God is all-knowing, which means yeah, that. that God knew a billion years ago what Nick and I and you and everyone is doing today. That's what omniscience means. He knew a billion years ago what we're doing today. Now... That means that we don't have the power <laughs> to do anything different. Right. Because if we were going to, if we try, if we were able to do something different than from what God knew that we were going to do, then obviously that means that God would not be omniscient. All right. So if you believe in omniscient God, you have to understand not only how that makes human free will impossible, it also makes God's free will impossible. Explain that. That's... Wait, say it one more time. All right, what, so what, this is great. This is a good one. All right, so like basically... If I had like, a free will, I would have been listening God, very attentively. God, God, a billion years ago, knew not only what you and I would be doing today and the rest of the audience, but God, a billion years ago, knew what God would be doing today. So what does that tell you? God. I, I don't know, but all I know is if, if God knows what you're going to do, if I'm going to choose tonight between... Chinese food and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and uh, going out for a steak dinner and I and God knows that I'm going to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I decide to go have a steak dinner. Obviously, I can't go have a steak dinner because God knows I'm going to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I have to change my mind at the last second to have the peanut butter and jelly. So you can't yeah, actually it encourages tremendous humility and gratitude and compassion because only a person who believes that it's his will will you can't be serving the Lord in humility if you think you're doing your will and not God's will. So it really encourages a sense of humility and nobility, like you used to say, that you're doing what what is the will of the universe or God for you. So all this self-willed nonsense of arrogance and, you know, I deserve this and I'm doing that would, would be conceit, really, with, with the free will, you know, self-willed paradigm. Uh, in your thing with the universal will, it really promotes humility. I'm glad you brought that up because it's not only it's, promotes it's the humility. Most conceited, I just thought about this. Free will is the most conceited thing I've ever... Nick, it, yeah. it, 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 it's much worse than conceit. Yeah, it's, it's much worse. I can think of the right it's word. blasphemy. Blasphemy yeah, is the that. idea. Blasphemy, I think, technically, is attributing to human beings a quality only reserved to God. In other words, like, if God is all-powerful 
and we're attributing power to ourselves, we're denying God that power. So any of you like, you know, Christians, Jews, religious believers that want to like, you know, abide by this no blasphemy rule to the extent you're attributing free will to yourself and others, it's like you're considering yourself little gods. You're denying God's sovereignty. That's right. All right. Now, what about Sam Harris and all the other writers about... Oh, uh, no, no, I, my, but my point... No, but they're all atheists. I, know, but I want to finish my point. There's a huge my, atheist. I know, but my point about, like, right. in other words, like, so if God knew a billion years ago what, not only what you and I are doing today and everyone else, but if God knew a billion years ago what God is doing today, that means God is also locked into that also. God can't decide, you know, to do something different from... Listen, well, let me... I never me said out. God had free will. No, I know. I know, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I, well, know, I never said not, that. I never said you did. Uh, <laughs> the universe doesn't have free will. No, but, no, but, no, but that's what when, I'm whenever saying. Whenever you say God, I think the universe, just no, no, so you know. But this is, I don't yeah, picture God, a guy in a white robe in a cloud like, somewhere. This is like, yeah, this is like God, you know, being all-knowing. or right, no, no, Omniscient, right. So omniscient. God... God, and again, we're addressing these, these God believers, you know, they believe in God, 80, 90%. So like God believe, God knows a billion years ago, again, not what everybody, not just what everybody's doing today, but God also knows what God is doing today. I have no idea what God is doing today. I don't know what he does every day, but he must do, do stuff. He but, she it. But the point is, just as we're locked into doing whatever we do because, because God knew it a billion years ago, God him, her, itself, whatever you want to say, is also locked into that. In other words, like, if God knew a billion years ago what God is doing today, God has to do what God knew a billion years ago that he would do today. So what we're saying is God doesn't have any free will either, at least today. He might have had free will, like, who knows, a long, 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 long time, time ago. That's a good point. So you're addressing the inconsistency of religious people who think God is omniscient and also believe in free will. Obviously, it's impossible if God knows everything that you have free will because but, you can't go against God and be a little, a little guy. That's blasphemous. But what about all the people watching? And mostly when I read all these books refuting free will, like Sam Harris and whoever else, they tend to be atheists. So they're going to say, you know, so how do you, how do you address, you know, that population, the atheists? Well, the atheists... The atheists that do believe in free will, maybe. There's got to be out there. They've got to yeah. be out there. Fortunately, I think... I, I mean, th in other words, if they don't believe in God, does that give them an, a, a, a loophole to believe in free will? No. Of course no. not. There are no loopholes. Free Obviously, will doesn't mean anything. Because, like, you know, again, we're defining God and the universe as synonymous. You know, it's a pantheist... No, you make a good point. If God is all-knowing and I, there's no way you could believe in free will, but what if someone says, I don't believe in God and I believe in free will? Right. Well, then basically we Ca just Causality, have to, science. Exactly. Causality. In other words, like, this causality is a scientific, a logical law. The law of cause and effect. The principle of causality. It applies to theistic concepts. It applies to physical concepts. It applies to spiritual concepts. Some, some people will say, like, well, you know, like, this, this causal law is just physical, but my thoughts are not physical. My thoughts are spiritual. That doesn't matter because, like, what's, like... You got some alarm, whatever. Yeah, there All must right. be a cause to it somewhere. So anyway, so like, um, basically, if you define your um, your thoughts as spiritual and think that they can circumvent com causality, think that they're not caused, they can like, you know, evade this law as a cause and effect. No, cause and effect is also a logical concept. In other words, like, nothing can happen without a cause. And again, if you posit, if you suggest, if you believe that th some things can happen without a cause, that's not going to help your argument for free will, because if you're saying that some things aren't caused and you apply that, positing that proposition to human decisions and what you're saying is that human decisions aren't caused and if human decisions aren't caused we can't be causing them with a free will obviously all right so like what uh, so like all right free will you know so basically what we're saying is like we have a what about when people say i'm an immaterial solar spirit and uh you know i don't get do cause and effect because that's a physical concept uh, I'm an immaterial, numinous soul. You haven't been listening. I just explained oh. that. <laughs> well, I can tell you what the answer is. Good. And repeat it, because it bears repeating. Well, I, I have my answer. Absolutely. What did you say the answer was? I said... Oh, because causality is, is a logical concept. Exactly, yes. You didn't, con you didn't choose your soul. You might have an evil soul. You might have a nice soul. You might have an annoying soul. You might be a very irritable soul. And you're not in conscious control of your soul. And your soul... I'll let you do this part. 
Every decision your soul might be doing happens in a moment in time. That's a great, all right, another. That's, I so, know you like that so moment yeah, in time. So let's, let, right, so let's apply it to the soul. So like you're saying like, you or know, spirit. I, People I like have a free spirit will, right, because I have a free will because my soul or my spirit is really what, what, what has and a not free will. And that's subject to causality because it's not physical. Right, so it's not subject, let's say, let's say it's not subject to causality, but you didn't make your soul. In other words, like, you know, we're assuming that you believe that God created your soul. You, you, you know, you, you didn't create your own soul, right? So if you didn't create your soul, then obviously you can't be responsible for what the soul does. Excellent. Okay. And you're not in conscious control of your soul. Exactly. And let me ask you something. Why would a soul not learn from its mistakes also? Why would it not get conditioned like every other part of you? A soul could just keep making the same mistakes over and over again, not learn from its past uh, causal history? I, I don't know. get it. I know. I don't get it either. It doesn't make sense. All right. So basically, you're beginning to understand, you know, after, so. after, what is this, 186 shows, 100? Come on, people. And you can't blame them. It's like the surrealistic aspect of this is God makes us, you know, believe in this completely insane, delusional, you know, free will thing that the stuff is up to us and did you tell me the other day that you can't go in front of a judge and say my will wasn't free it's like not allowed in the united states it's a supreme court our idiotic supreme court but i thought we had like, free speech we can say whatever we want that's different it's free speech and free will is different in other words, no no why can't we have free speech in court and tell the judge i don't have free will i didn't even know that wasn't in my genetics it wasn't in my personal history my causality my environment I didn't know about it. You can say it, but, oh, the judge, say it. but the judge will tell you yes. But in 1978, the Supreme Court decreed that, that free will is the law of the land. In other words, the Supreme Court de de decreed that the United States as an entity believes in free will. That's how insane it is. Oh, boy. Yeah. And, and uh, like, let's go into like, you want to go into how like it causes the, the climate change thing or? You, that's your thing. I, I like the... You know, free will causes suicide and homicide and people to, to needlessly suffer. George likes to attach it to climate change. If you want to do that, it's fine with me. It's your show. Well, all right. Because, like, the, you know, we just got into this government thing, that the United States saying the free will is the law of the land. This is how harmful that law is, that belief is. You know, over 50% of Americans don't believe in free will, or in, in climate change. They deny climate change is happening, okay? They're denying it. What is denial? Denial is like when somebody accuses you of something that is so horrible, you know, in this case, it's so horrible, you can't believe, you know, you say, no way, I'm not that horrible of a person. In other words, scientists are telling people, you of your free will, this is what they're hearing, you of your free will are, are doing some things so horrible that you are threatening the destruction of the entire civilization, of the extinction, uh, extinction of many, many species, you know, the, the eventual deaths of, of perhaps billions of people. When people hear that, they can't accept it, so unconsciously they go into denial. Now, they wouldn't go into denial if they didn't believe in free will. Mm. Because, like, for example, take the, the opposite. Let's say a scientist say, tells the, the audience, the, the public, listen, you don't have a free will, so don't blame yourself for this. It's not your fault. But what we're doing to the planet, you know, with the greenhouse gases and all, is creating such a dire, threatening situation mm. that if we continue, you know, your, grandparent, your grandchildren are not going to have a future. OK, if they hear that message, all of a sudden they don't have to go into denial. They don't have to like their unconscious doesn't have to deny that climate change is happening because they don't feel threatened. So you're saying denial is a psychological defense mechanism to shield the person from the, the damaging emotional feeling they have by thinking they're deeply and truly to blame for something. There you go. So with that, so if you get rid of free will, you're not actually doing anything ever because there's no you. You're there's like there's no self. We're just chemicals, synapses, and neurons. So therefore, you'd be more likely to not go into the de denial, which is a psychological defense, because there's nothing to defend. You didn't really. You're not deeply to blame. Perfect. Exactly. Again. So that's. So then we could deal with a whole host of issues, not just clim uh, global climate change. Oh yeah. Anytime anyone dites you in something, you know, you you could take a good impartial look at it. Yes. And say, listen, my will's not free. What's the cause to that? Let's, what maybe I did do that. Exactly. Again, that's a great I, point. I meaning that, my chemicals did that. That's a great point because, like you know, much of much of the conflict in the world, both 
geopolitically, societally, and interpersonally, and even within ourselves, basically as a result of we're blaming, you know, like, you know, we're blaming, we're indicting ourselves and other people. And to the extent that, like, we overcome this free will belief, nobody's going to feel guilty for anything. Nobody's going to need to, like, go into any kind of, like, you know, um, denial, you know, and then, like, like Nick was saying, they'll be able to just look at the facts obje objectively and, and, like, much more intelligently, you know, be able to, like, figure well, out what Well, you can still feel slight guilt to fix something, but you're not going to feel deep, fundamental guilt where you'll deny it. Denial is a deep psychological defense, not a, you know, a, a minor one. A minor one, you, wouldn't, you would still feel slight guilt, but if it's really that indicting, then you would go into denial. It depends how deep the wound is. That's true. That's yeah, true. you could, yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, theoretically, like... Because, if, because it, it, without free will, you still have to feel some guilt to fix something you may have done wrong. Well, here's the thing. Slight right. guilt. Let's not say I do deep something Deep toxic guilt causes denial because you right. can't handle it. Let's say I do something wrong and I don't realize it's wrong until later. You know, um, I park someplace that it's like a handicapped parking place, right? And then I get out to the car and I say, oh my God, I parked where I shouldn't have parked, right? Now, like... I can like use my conscience is going to tell me some, I did something wrong and my conscience will say, well, next time I, be, I want to be more vigilant so I don't make the same mistake, right? But because I know that I don't have a free will, I'm going to be doing that without feeling guilty at all. You know, because I know that, like, it wasn't up to me. If, I, if it was up to me, if I had a free yeah, will... Yeah, you still need I an internal do... moral compass to know you shouldn't do it the next time. Exactly. In other words, so that's our conscience. In other words, like, mm. we can still have a conscience that tells us right from wrong what to do without feeling guilty, without this whole non nonsensical free will belief. All right, so we have about a minute left. So uh, we are in White Plains. We are in Manhattan. If you're watching this show, congratulations. You're at the you know, forefront of a tipping point of the new human consciousness that will topple everything very soon. Please tell your friends and family to watch the show. We really want to get a uh, public debate in, you know, we want to align online media and viral media, which is YouTube. And I know there's a whole world exploding with the Facebook and you've got podcasts, but we want to marry the grassroots viral community to the mainstream regular media so we want you or somebody to, to help us get get onto cnn or abc or fox news and bring out and have a public debate of do you know free will believers versus no free will believers and let's get to the bottom of this and let and let the you know let's decide what's the actual reality is and work from there excellent and if you got like more money you know what to do with <laughs> And you, you want know, a good cause? Spend, spend $5 cause? million, dollars, uh, hire us to do a documentary. You'll make a problem about $20 million and spread this word, word to For the a better world, world, for the betterment of mankind. Exactly. exactly. No more re retribution and revenge and hate. Absolutely. Uh, a world what would the name of the movie be, real quick? God's Will. How about No Free Will, The, the New Human Consciousness? That sounds Another better. Another Inconvenient Truth. Bye. Sounds better. We'll see. <laughs>